Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? It's not just kids that ask that question. It's also commonly posed by amateurs, most often in relation to the progress, or lack thereof, of the next solar cycle. Are we there yet? No! 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 No, buddy. Yep, we're approaching a trough, and we're not there yet. Here's the evidence. As the numbers show, we haven't reached the bottom yet. And it's going to be about three years until we start to recover. It's not surprising, because sunspot cycles take longer to get to their bottom, typically about seven years, than to reach their top, typically about four years. This is my fourth sunspot low coming up. In all cases, I've heard amateurs, often much older than me, say, this is the worst sunspot low ever. In 50 years of operating, I've never had it so bad on the bands as this. I've really enjoyed operating during the high sunspot years. These videos are some examples from the last cycle. No matter whether it's the worst or not the worst conditions in the last 50 years, we've got to adapt to it. And the good news is, you can still have many amateur contacts, even when there's no sunspots. Here's a few things you can do, and these are independent of sunspot numbers. So you can be confident that even if sunspot numbers are zero, you'll still be able to enjoy them. The low bands. Since the last sunspot peak, amateurs in many countries have got extended privileges. So we've got bands like 2200 metres and 630 metres. Although you may think they require big antennas, there are still amateurs in small suburban backyards who are achieving success on those bands. Your measurements may be a bit different. Maybe success is not your 20,000 kilometre contact that it might be on 10 metres. Instead, you might be happy with 100, 200 or 300 kilometres. Still, that's a big achievement, particularly on these very long wavelengths. Another possibility are lower HF bands. They don't go dead during sunspot lows, but the propagation conditions do change. For instance, 7 MHz. During high and medium sunspot years, that band provided blanket coverage, at least during the day and sometimes even into the evening. But in low sunspot years, the rules change. You might hear stronger signals from stations that might be 1,000 or 1,500 kilometres away during the day, but you might not hear anyone that's 500 or less kilometres away. That's quite different to the situation in high sunspot years. The solution then is to go to a lower band, either 60 metres if you have it, or 80 metres. There's even sometimes occasions, especially at night, where 80 metres isn't so good. It may be good for DX, which offers some opportunities that we don't have in high sunspot years, but for local stuff, not so good. Again, a drop in frequency is desirable. Drop down to 160 meters, and even if your antenna is a compromise, you may still get much stronger signals down there than you do on 80 meters. And there's also likely less interference from afar. <laughs> Even the higher HF bands and lower VHF bands are not completely dead during low sunspot years. A great thing about them is the sporadic E conditions, most likely in midsummer and midwinter, though they can happen at any time of the year. They're particularly good for contacts up to maybe two or three thousand kilometres. Uh, 
Maybe we need to change some of our expectations or how we measure success. Traditional amateur radio, going back to the 1920s and 1930s, said that distance was everything. A 20,000 km long DX contact was better than a single hop contact, maybe two or 3,000 km away. That may be true, given an equal amount of power, but what if we were to drop our power? Go down from 100 watts or more, down into the milliwatt range. Even in low sunspot years, it should be possible to work quite surprising distances with small amounts of power. It may only be a single hop, but who's to say that a single hop contact made with 10 or 20 milliwatts is inferior to a multi-hop contact to the other side of the world with 100 watts, 1000 watts, or maybe even more. Another possibility is to go even higher in frequency into the upper VHF, UHF and microwave bands. You can still get sporadic E on 2 meters, but most of the enhanced propagation is due to temperature inversions. The handle is Gary and the location is Mount Gambia. I'll just drop the power. Okay, we're now running 500 milliwatts. Okay, 3 y okay, 5 down. Yeah, fine, fine, but drop back to about a 5 by 5. There's other propagation modes as well like aircraft enhancement, where a plane flying over the midpoint of a VHF path can improve signal strength, or bouncing signals off the moon. Then there's amateur satellites, and unlike HFDXs, satellites actually prefer lower sunspot years, because there's less likely to be solar flares that can play havoc with delicate satellite electronics. The point of this video is that even in the coming low sunspot period, you can still have a good experience on amateur radio, even sometimes working DX. But even if you don't, there's many other facets that are just as interesting, and I highly recommend that you try them out. Are we there yet? Soon, mate. If you want to get the most from amateur radio, check out my eBooks: minimum QRP, hand-carried QRP antennas, and getting back into amateur radio. All have been favourably reviewed and you can get them for a low price in electronic form. Visit my website vk3ye.com and follow the links or search their titles in Amazon. You can also like the VK3YE Radio Books page on Facebook. The books are available in electronic form and in some countries in paperback as well.